Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today on this Tuesday morning to be able to share God's word. It is a privilege and an honor. And just truly humble that I can be a vessel to share the word of God with you today as the door for the day goes to Zechariah chapter 12. When I came to verse 10, it speaks about one being pierced. People would look upon the one whom, whom they pierced. Uh, this was fulfilled, obviously, in the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we read in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 37, when Christ was being crucified and they saw that uh, his legs weren't broken in John chapter, 15, uh, John, chapter 19, verse 34, it says that one of the soldiers pierced his side. So this was fulfilled in Christ. And the crucifixion of Christ, my friends, uh, is for our salvation. Uh, but two things I wanted to speak about, about the crucifixion of Christ that stood out in my mind and my own heart today was, one, when, cru when Christ was being crucified in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, it tells us that he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I don't know about you, but me, when somebody does something wrong to me in my flesh, as I said before, I've shared this before, but growing up, and I often remind us, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 tells us, train up a child when they're young, and when they grow old, they won't depart from that way. The way you were raised is going to stay with you. It's in your flesh. Now, when we become born again, a new creation in Christ, we have a new spirit, new soul, but there's always going to be that clash and that war within us until we go home to be with the Lord in glory. And I grew up, dad was very rough. So when somebody hit me, I grew up in the street and he knew I was growing up with some tough guys. He said, if they hit you, you hit them right back. Well, that contradicts the life of a Christian. Now, I'm not saying you should not allow somebody to ever harm this body you have. This is a temple, the Holy Spirit, Christ resides within you. You should protect it. What I'm saying is, is that when we are offended in certain ways, uh, say somebody gossips about you or somebody slanders about you, our instinct is to strike back. My friends, we are called to be like Christ. Ephesians 5.1 tells us to be imitators of God in Christ. Um, when Christ was being crucified, he didn't say, Oh, let me get down there and get these guys. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. In Mark chapter 15, verses 23 to 24, we read when Christ was being crucified, people offered him wine mixed with myrrh. Now, back then in ancient times, this was done to try to dull the pain. Again, when I'm in some kind of pain, and crucifixion was the worst kind of pain anybody could ever imagine. But when I have a toothache or I have some kind of ache in my body or sometimes people, when they have emotional pain and suffering, they right away run to uh, some medications. I have nothing wrong with taking medications. I, I take supplements to try to keep my body healthy. Um, a few years ago, I had a hernia operation. I was given some medication to help with the pain. My friends... There's nothing in and of itself to take advantage of the things that God has given us, the common grace blessings. But what I'm asking you is that when something comes up in your life, where do you go first to? Do you go to the bottom of a bottle? I mean, fortunately, I mean, we shouldn't as Christians do that, but a lot of people do. Uh, the end of a needle, the arms of a loved one. Uh, do we look for comfort and strength in food, uh, entertainment? Um, where do we go? Do we go to our own emotions, first and foremost? Self-pity, anger, depression. People are trying to numb themselves very quickly in society today. Uh, the, the prescription drug crisis in America right now is of epidemic proportions. People are just running uh, to get high. I recently witnessed to a young man in my neighborhood. Uh, he was a student in a school many years ago. And he remembered me and he's about 23 years old. And he told me a couple of years ago he was contemplating suicide. And I tried, to, tried talking to him. And he says what helps him is, is taking marijuana, smoking weed every day, staying, staying numb, staying high. Well, I tried to encourage him that that's not really the answer. And the Bible tells us in 
And I've shared this, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, where people forsake God, they make themselves broken cisterns. That's like a well without water. Or I would say the, uh, the vase with a crack at the bottom and you try to put water in there and feed the plants and the water just goes seeping right out. It never is satisfied. I don't care how much marijuana you smoke or whatever alcohol or beer, there's people in my neighborhood and I don't judge them, but I try to witness to them who are retired, they're lonely, and they drink what they call tall boys. They go to the gas station, they get these tall boys, these beers. And I heard them tell me it helps to calm them down, helps them to deal with their loneliness and their anxiety. But my friends, where we go to as Christians when we suffer is not to these things. We go to God and Jesus Christ because in this life we're going to suffer. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 tells us it has been granted to us not only to believe in Jesus Christ, but to suffer for him. Life is going to hurt. We're called to be crucified to the flesh and the things of this world. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 tells us and to live for Christ. This is going to be painstaking, dying to self dying to the things of this world, dying to our own pleasures, our own desires. It is painstaking. But my friends, this is what we are called to do. I'm just telling you what the Bible tells us. I go through this in my own life. Yes, I might be saved 38 years now. As I'm getting older chronologically, the battle goes on. It still goes on. The battle between the flesh and the spirit, but the flesh has to be crucified. Our desire for the things of this world need to be crucified. But my friends, through all this, we need to be reminded, as Psalm 34, verse 10 tells us, God will not forsake any good thing to us. He will not withhold anything good for us. He will always give us, give us what we need, not what we want. There's a difference. Sometimes we go to God with a wish list of things we want him to do. We go to him like uh, the genie in the bottle. I remember that show, I Dream a Genie, and we rub the genie bottle, and the genie pops out and does whatever we ask of him. That's how we treat God. So I know that's how I treat God. I come to him with a laundry list of things for him to do. But we need to be reminded. He will always provide for us. Christ our Lord and Savior said in Luke chapter 12, verse 24, look at the ravens. You know, they don't worry about where they're going to eat. And I come out in this wooded area. I actually hear one flying over my head right now, a bird. The birds don't worry about where they're going to eat. They're being taken care of. God, the Father, our Father, takes care of them. How much more will he take care of us who are made in his image? My friends today, trust in the Lord. No matter what you're going through today, he will not leave you nor forsake you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 8. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. So we'll see this devotional video today. Lord, may we be reminded as Christ was crucified for our sins, we are crucified. We are to be crucified to our sins more and more each and every day. In his name we pray. God bless you all.